The Ketchum Inn Foundation is busy re-establishing an authentic look at 18th century life on Long Island. Originally called the Mauritius Inn in Brookhaven Town Records, the building has served as a tavern, inn, stagecoach stop, and public house. The original building appears to have been a settlement cottage and dates to the late 1600s before the area was officially settled. The foundation has had an architectural drawing done of such a cottage dated to 1693. Subsequent additions followed over the next 100 years with a kitchen wing added in the 1940s, bringing the building to its present configuration. The property was part of a tract of land Warrockta Neck, owned in its early days by Samuel Terrell, a blacksmith from Milford, Connecticut. He purchased the parcel from Jacob Doughty of Jamaica in Queens County in 1698. To keep on friendly terms with the indigenous Paquatuck, it was said that Chief John Mayhew was at one time paid a competent sum of money for the land. Terrell was known to have good relations with the native population, who named a nearby river in his honor. Early accounts suggest a fire on the 1st of December in 1698, just a month and a half after purchasing, destroyed his homestead and blacksmith shop on the west shore of the Terrell River. He sold the property to Sarah Scudder Conkling in 1714 and moved to nearby Yapank Neck, another of his holdings. Sarah was the widow of John Conkling of Southhold on Long Island's North Fork. John died in around 1705, leaving his wife and their two sons, John and Henry, a sizable amount of money and property in Southhold. Sarah established a cattle ranch on the former Terrell property, most likely for trade with the West Indies. Her land passed to her son Thomas after her death in 1753. Thomas quickly sold to his sister, Sarah's son, John Havens, Jr., it was John's son, Benjamin Havens, Sarah Scudder's great-grandson, who proposed in 1772, along with several other innkeepers, a coach route from Brooklyn to Sag Harbor that made a stop at the inn in Mauritius. He was known to have run a tavern there during the Revolutionary War while the British occupied Long Island. Havens assisted the Patriot cause by spying on the British troops and supplying movements in and around nearby Fort St. George. The British, who at one point had raided the inn, referred to Benjamin as a most pernicious caitiff. About 1783, Haven sold to William Terry, who continued to run it as an inn. It was in 1791 that Jefferson and Madison stayed at Terry's Hotel while visiting prominent Long Islander General William Floyd, signer of the U.S. Constitution, in nearby Mastic. The seat of the federal government was in New York City at the time, and Jefferson was George Washington's Secretary of State. He and his friend Madison were on Long Island investigating a plague of Hessian flies that were doing great damage to the American grain industry. While in the area, he was also documenting the vanishing Native American languages. The inn would serve as a home base while he made records of the Unkachak language when visiting the Puspatuck Reservation in Mastic. Terry Descendant sold to Andrew Ketchum of Huntington in 1852. During the Ketchum era, the inn's central location provided for a variety of public gatherings. In 1854, it was used for voting, and the local court was also held there. Civil War volunteers would later meet and drill on the property. The inn remained in possession of the Ketchum family until 1912. With monikers like Clinton Inn, Wayside Inn, Hitching Post, Colonial Arms, and Stagecoach Stop, the inn would remain in continuous use in one form or another until August of 1989. It was at this pivotal moment, almost 300 years after the initial fire that took Terrell's homestead, that an unfortunate, destructive, though contained fire would ignite efforts and set the stage like the mythical phoenix for the landmark's eventual rebirth. 
Since the Ketchum Inn Foundation began its efforts to restore the inn in 1989, much progress has been made. The site was listed with the National Historic Places Registrar, archaeological digs have been done, conservation specialists have been brought in, plans have been drawn, and history has been gathered. Restoration carpenters specializing in timber frame construction had been hired, and were busy on the job, peeling away the layers to identify and preserve what was original to the historic building. Restorations continue to be ongoing, with every day bringing us closer to our goal of restoring our former stagecoach stop to its 1790s glory. It seems fitting that this historic site, which was most always a public space hosting travelers by stagecoach and later by rail, providing shelter for the night, drinks in the tavern, dances in the ballroom, and dinners in the restaurant, will again have a public purpose. We look forward to opening it as a living history museum and farm, reflecting life in the Murchis Bay area during the 18th and 19th centuries for our community and future generations to enjoy.